Hi, I'm Anson the Million Dollar Crow, and you're watching Seconds Out. This sort of ties in with what we've been discussing. Given what you're doing now with UK boxing, do you, do you believe that progressively fewer fighters are perceiving it to be necessary to go to the United States? You know, like there was sometimes in, in the past couple of decades, it, there was this perception that, oh, you've got to go, to be big, you've got to go over to the US. Yeah. You've got to fight there. You, you know, what, what you're doing here, these massive shows, yeah. Wembley, that, that perception is gradually being eradicated, isn't it? If you're a box office fighter or you've got box office potential, yeah. and by that I mean Sky pay-per-view, there is no more money to be made anywhere in, else in the world than in the UK, other than potentially if you're on pay-per-view in the US, but actually, I think here. So the purse for the likes of Froch and et cetera, et cetera, are, sorry, are a, a miles beyond what he could make in America, other than potentially a dual pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't see the need to necessarily have to go to America unless it's where the opportunity lies. So you would have seen me send a lot of our fighters, and when I say send, it wasn't like, right, just to let you know, you're going out there to fight Sergio Martinez on October 1st, that's your money, good luck. Yeah. But when you've got an opportunity to fight a great in America on HBO for a potload of money, you have to really consider your options. Yeah. And sometimes the timing's right. And the timing right was for Darren Barker to fight Sergio Martinez. The timing was right for Gavin Rees to fight Adrian Broner. You know, and, and you can't take away opportunities from these people. And ultimately, they'll make the, the decision, mm -hmm. you know, them, them and their trainer. Yeah. It's my job to put the opportunities in front of them. But it's like, it's like me going to you and saying, look, I'm going to offer you this job. It's 50 times... 20 times or whatever more than you've ever made or been on before it's going to be tough and you're probably going to be out of your debt but I think you've got a chance mm -hmm. and I think it's going to open a lot of doors for you mm -hmm. what's the answer the answer yeah, is you know, when's the flight yeah. you know so yeah. those fights and other promoters say oh he, all he does is sling him in with no not at all the reason Daniel the reason Darren Barker beat Daniel Gill was because of the experience he had against Sergio Martinez in that same city. So yeah. you can come back from a loss. It's really not the end of the world, as long as the loss happens at an elite level. Yeah. Um, and do you, I mean, do you get a sense of this via social media as well? I, I've seen some prominent journalists discussing Frotch and Groves. They mm. kind of used it as the benchmark. Oh, you know, people say boxing's dead. Mm. Well, what they're doing over in the UK, there's an 80,000 show yeah, at Wembley. Yeah. I think uh, Dan Raphael was sure, one yeah. of them at ESPN. Do you, do you get that sense via social media that the US boxing scene is is sort of that they're onlookers and they're looking and they are impressed by what's going no, they on? They must be, and it's not just Britain; it's Germany as well. is a, is a great focal point yeah. and example of where else boxing's thriving because they have packed out arenas. But I've been to so many fights in America where the atmosphere has been awful, you know, and. They don't have atmosphere like we have over here. Yeah. So I think, you know, people, you know, that thing about, oh, who says boxing's dead, that's a bit annoying because people say it every time there's a big show, and there's always a big show. You know, it doesn't matter if it's in the UK, it's in America, every week there's a big show somewhere. Yeah. And generally it's on TV. So boxing's nowhere near dead, and it's certainly in a great, a much better place than it was three or four years ago. So it's. And then you mentioned with the atmosphere, so it's not just a cliche that fighters, when they come over here, they say, oh, the, the British atmosphere is electric. That's true, but that's just us as people as well. It's not just boxing. Yeah. You know, our atmosphere at sporting events is better generally than, I believe, the Americans, you know what I mean? But I've been to Brona Reese, I've been to Ward against Froch, I've been to Ward against Johnson, I've been to Barker against Martinez, Barker against Gill. Yeah. So many fights in America, and it's, the atmosphere's been naff. Yeah. Yeah, they're not they're not nutty like us Brits, where it's like shirt off and <laughs> screaming for your man to win, and that's yeah. what it's like when you see supporters over here. Yeah, desperation to see their man win. It's not like in America. It's oh, it's a casino. What is it a fight? Who's fighting? It's great. Let's go. Very you know, wild yeah. kind of approach yeah. to it. Yeah. The, and then I was gonna. Uh, is that a reason? For example, I know you've mentioned potentially Paulie Malanagini. Paulie Malinaji, if he prevails against Sean Porter, you've mentioned potentially he'll come over here, 
fight Kelbrook. That, that's a fight that could happen. When, when that, it's got to help, hasn't it, when they see the state of British boxing over here, for, for someone like Paulie to see that actually, yeah, I could come over and sell out an arena. Yeah. Well, and he could, Kelbrook. you know, Brooke, Brooke Malignaggi is a big fight over here. Yeah. Um, Brooke Porter is still big, but not as big. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of money for Paulie to come over here for that fight. So it gives us hope that we could make that fight in the UK. Yeah. Um, against Porter, it's likely we'd have to go to America. But, you know, I think there's no secrets. People know how much money is involved in pay-per-view mm -hmm. in, in the British market. And they'd all love to be involved with it. But, it's, you know, it's difficult. It's not a case of every fight's pay-per-view. I'm not even saying Brooke Malignaggi's pay-per-view, because I'm not sure it is without something substantial as well. Yeah. So, you know, pay-per-view is um, very difficult to you know really get into the mix for but it's the holy grail mm -hmm. for any fighter it's the only place you can earn mega money yeah i mean your dad mentioned it yesterday in the interview with coogan he said that sort of the promoter now is you sort of provide the service for the fighter so it's, mm. it's, it's not so much of the promoter taking the, the lion's share mm. of, of mm. the pot the fighters do now um yeah how did that happen it's terrible. <laughs> no, you're, you're quite right. We work it's, for the fighters. They own the show. Once they get yeah. to that level, yeah. you know, you're working for the fighter and, and you're effectively taking commission, if you like, right. for your services. Yeah. You know. Um, but back in the old days when he was around, the fighters got a purse yeah. and the promoters kept everything else. Right. You know. Yeah. I mean, and I suppose talking about the money side of things, and I will let you go after this. You've been very generous with your time, Eddie. Um, you know, the, why do you get this posturing in boxing? So, for example, I'll give you the example. When I spoke to Joe, he said the fight was offered to Franzen. Mm -hmm. A quarter of a million or something in that Correct. region was offered to him. Obviously, we've heard you in various interviews say, mm -hmm. fight, you know, Khan could have made five million to fight Brooke mm -hmm. and stuff. Why is this this posturing in boxing whereby people are d deny things or they say, oh, I didn't hear that or, you know, I wasn't offered that or... Sometimes know. people aren't told. Sometimes... It's ego. Sometimes people are lying. So, you know, it's, it's a mixture of different things. If you take each uh, situation <coughs> that you were talking about there, Carl Frampton, yes, he was off a quarter of a million pounds. Yes, that offer was increased. Um, you know, I had a conversation with the McGuigans yesterday where they were saying, yeah, but you never came back to us. And it was like, yeah, but I made you an offer. Yeah. I, I, and Scott Quigg's the world champion. I can't be chasing you. You know, if it was me and I wanted a fight and it was a good offer, you wouldn't get me off the phone. I'd turn up around your house. Yeah. You know, but you, you know, so, and again, we can't. I, I don't know, because it was such a huge offer, yeah. where it's like, what do they think? I'm lying? I mean, like, then call my bluff. Yeah. You know, or do they just think we might lose to Kelbrook and if we do, our career's over. Whereas if we lose to Colazzo, which I think he might, yeah. we'll fight Kelbrook. You know, I don't know, but then obviously it's not going to be five million. Yeah. So, I think you know, in terms of the posturing, and, and it's, it's sometimes people aren't being fed the truth by their contacts. Some people are just lying, and some people just egos getting in the way, <coughs> and they're making decisions, they're making emotional decisions rather than the correct decision for their career. But no, it's, it's boxing; nothing's going to change. Well, uh, thanks very much for your time today. No problem. I really appreciate it's it. Dinner time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, thank you very no much. Worries, I really no appreciate worries. that, Eddie.